Miss Lily, are you all set? She's looking at me like that. Crazy. <laughs> Anytime you're ready. Okay. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Uh, so my sister's been after me uh, because she's in the film business. She wanted to see uh, some of the cool images that we've uh, generated. So we're going to do that in just a second. But first, I want to give you just a really quick update on what's going on. As you may know, the CDC is now recommending uh, that you get an additional uh, bivalent boost, uh, booster if you're over the age of 65. When to get that? Maybe six months after your last one, or if you're planning on traveling. My sister's planning on going to Europe in September, so I told her to wait till maybe June, but any time after that's fine. We're no longer giving the monovalent vaccines, and anyone over the age of six really should be getting bivalent vaccines. So that's the latest from the CDC. Case is totally inaccurate. I have no idea what's going. <laughs> I have no idea what's going out there. Except hospitalizations are down, and I have been following the variant, the XBB variants, and it's the the XBB 1.5 remains the dominant variant, 75 percent, but about 20 percent are now derivatives of that XBB variant. So, if you were unlucky enough, or if you're lucky enough to survive having gotten it, you should be resistant to these two for at least six months. Uh, wastewater is interesting because it's not going down. 42% of the sites in the United States are still reporting either a doubling or at least an increase by 100%. And almost all of those are in the Midwest. So now Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin, western part of North Carolina, that's where if you're traveling to those locations, there's still a lot of virus in those areas. So just be, be cautious. Well, so today it was really, I want to do something different because uh, we have had, uh, I mentioned the two uh, uh, images that have been selected for stamps. Uh, they are in the life magnified category and there's a sheet of 20 stamps. Two of the images come from our, our, our core. And it's really fascinating. This, this is the Baylor Advanced Technology Core. It's called the Optical Imaging and Vital Microscopy Core. It's under the direction of uh, Mary Dickinson, our Senior Vice President for Research. And the, the things that we do at Baylor that are a little bit different is we try to create these advanced technology courses so, so that any scientist here can use them. Uh, and they really are amazing and we're going to go have a little tour of them and see some of the images that are generated. So please join me and we'll go to the imaging core. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Dickinson and today I'm not visiting with you as the Dean of Research, I'm visiting with you as a core director for our, one of our advanced technology cores, the Optical Imaging and Vital Microscopy Core. And this core is really structured around providing solutions to scientists to image objects in three dimensions, to really turn what you can't see inside of something into something that you can really use to interpret disease models or to be able to follow the development of organ structures. And so the types of solutions we have here are confocal microscopy, light sheet microscopy, clearing solutions to clear um, otherwise opaque samples into things that you can image in three dimensions, and also micro CT strategies that utilize uh, CT technology to be able to image through whole 3D structures at high resolution. So we invite you to come down and check out what we have and really be able to use the core facilities, and uh, I hope that it helps impact your work. So the instrument that you're seeing here is our flagship confocal microscope. This confocal microscope has 34 independent spectral channels that can discriminate up to eight fluorophores in parallel. Another unique feature of this microscope is the AERI-SCAN super resolution detection system, which effectively doubles the resolution of a traditional confocal microscope. Traditional confocal microscopy achieves resolution down to 200 nanometers. The AERI-SCAN pushes that a little bit further down to between 80 and 100 nanometers. The microscope is equipped with live cell incubation accessories, allowing you to control temperature, CO2, and humidity on the stage of the microscope. So this instrument allows you to collect more than one color simultaneously. So you can collect up to three. Um, here we're gonna do them sequentially so the, it'll suppress the noise and enhance the signal, uh, as well as improve the resolution. So you can see a comparison of that side by side with the more traditional confocal data.
our screening microscope is basically mm -hmm. just to screen for fluorescence to make sure that things are working before taking it into mm -hmm. the light sheet. Uh, another technique that our core is specialized for is tissue clearing and uh, light sheet imaging. Tissue clearing basically is a method that we make the tissue become optically transparent by either removing the lipid or raise the index of refraction of the tissue to the surrounding media and uh, make it homogeneous. So that's how we can achieve making the tissue transparent. Now you can see we have made this mouse embryo completely transparent but under the fluorescence light, because the sample is tagged with fluorescence, then you, can, you will be able to observe what's actually inside that's being labeled with this tissue. This is the Carl Zeiss Light Sheet Z1. This is a dual side illuminated light sheet microscope. Um, and the advantage of this platform compared to a traditional confocal microscope uh, is the illumination is done perpendicular to the imaging plane. And we can use the illumination optics to form a very thin sheet uh, that optically sections through the specimen uh, and detect directly uh, onto the camera system. The advantage here is, is that we can image much larger specimens that you can put on a traditional microscope. The advantage of light sheet is we now can actually take a whole mount tissue or organs and uh, after clearing image as a whole, this method provides you a much faster and a global view on what's happening within your biological tissue. So another imaging modality or techniques that we have here at OIVM is micro CT imaging. In combination of iodine contrasting, we are able to detect the architecture or anatomy of soft tissue. So what you're seeing here is that uh, although we did some digital manipulation for some of the some parts of the sample disappear, but all the anatomical structure within, like the heart, liver bone, brain, uh, you will be able to easily visualize it. All the contrasts are generated by how the iodine is retained by the soft tissue. So different tissue composition will have different amount of iodine, hence they generate different contrasts on the x-ray detector. If you need more specific marker labeling, that's where the fluorescence uh, imaging techniques like a confocal and daishi microscopy that will come into play. Well, that was really great going to visit the cores and seeing some of the images they produce. It's really fascinating. I want to end today with some shout outs. First of all, uh, thanks to all the alumni who attended reunion last week. It was really great and they raised $140,000 in matching funds for student scholarships. So great to see everybody in person after several years and also thank you to all the donors. As you know, last week was the end of Ramadan. Uh, with the celebration, I'm going to try to get it right with uh, Eid El Fatur. I hope everyone enjoyed the observation, enjoyed the celebration. Uh, also, I wanted to uh, celebrate the, this week of, of Administrative Professionals Day. Uh, that's the, the day we celebrate everybody who makes this place go, so uh, fantastic for that. And then the last uh, thing I wanted to say is, our, you know, as we've, you know, we're, we've adopted Dimmick County, and the Carrizo softball team actually went undefeated in the Carrizo League 12 the uh, 12 and under girls softball team went undefeated this season and won the championship in San, in San Antonio. So congratulations to the, the girls softball team. Anyway, have a great weekend and I can't wait to see you next week.